Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about OpenBOR. OpenBOR is an open source side-scrolling sprite-based game engine, and it just got its first update since 2019. They say that this is the first release of OpenBOR 4.0, representing over five years and 1,139 updates to the source code and there's over 20 pages of updates. So included in this new version are updates to video, audio, controls, collision, recursive damage, and even more. Moving forward, they're switching back to incremental updates. They say they're returning to the old model of smaller, more frequent updates. The buildup and years long wait for 4.0 was obviously a mistake and they're scrapping that development model. If you are curious about OpenBOR, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. And if you're curious as to what games have been made with OpenBOR. I'll drop a link to this website in the description below. Next up here, we're talking about Geometry Dash, and we talked about this one a few weeks back when it received a massive update. And now people have had time to experience that update and they're creating some very interesting things. I mean, someone is working on Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. And someone has recreated Rainbow Road in Super Mario Kart for the SNES. Absolutely crazy. This is Geometry Dash. If you are interested in this stuff, right now Geometry Dash is available for 50% off on Steam. Now for those who wanted to possibly experience something just a little bit different, there is a fan-made version of Geometry Dash called Geometry Light. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. There's a whole bunch of different courses for it. Next, we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, and in your web browser with Play. And the developers have been extremely busy trying to make this emulator as compatible as possible. I mean, if we take a look at the compatibility tracker, they have tested out 2,560 games, and 41.17% of those are now playable. Now, version 0.62 of Play was released back in August, and it is already outdated. If you head to the Play website and click on Downloads, the latest release here was as of December 27th. And for those of you on Android, the Google Play Store version is also outdated, so you can always pick up a much newer version from their website. And I would say at this point in time, PCSX2, AetherSX2, or NetherSX2 are still better options, but Play is coming along and getting a lot better. Next up, I'm moving on to the rapid fire stuff. The first thing on the docket is this Street Fighter Zero port to the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. This is the arcade version of the game, and the port is shaping up pretty nicely. Next, a few videos ago I was talking about Technoparrot, and there were some people asking exactly what Technoparrot is, and well, here's a prime example of it. This is Jurassic Park Arcade running in Technoparrot. I'll drop a link to this video in the description below. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Jurassic Park only works with the paid version of Technoparrot, and it could take a while for it to be available on the free public builds. Next up, we're talking about Neko JB, or Neko JB. It's a semi-untethered jailbreak for iOS 15 to 15.8. From my understanding, the most recent update gets this to work with 15.8, and it appears they're working on getting this working with version 16.0 16.5. Now to be absolutely clear here, I don't own an iPhone, I don't have any way of testing out jailbreaking methods, and therefore I can't recommend anything. I'm just simply providing the news. Next, we're talking about Square Enix, and they just posted their New Year's letter from the president, and it appears that in 2024 they're going to be heavily diving into AI. I mean, they say right here, we also intend to be aggressive in applying AI and other cutting-edge technologies to both our content development and our public publishing functions. In the short term, our goal will be to enhance our development productivity and achieve greater sophistication in our marketing efforts. In the longer term, we hope to leverage those technologies to create new forms of content for consumers as we believe that technological innovation represents business opportunities. The way I read and understand this is that in the short term here, they plan on cutting developers and saving some money by replacing them with AI. I could be wrong though. Next, there's three ROM hacks on romhacking.net that were just released that are pretty interesting. The first one here is the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time that has been fully translated to Latin. The second one is a pretty extensive hack for Tecmo Super Bowl for the NES. It's called Tecmo Super Bowl NCAA 2K24 Edition. 
This one contains 32 NCAA Division I teams and a whole bunch more. And the third ROM hack is an arguably lesser known fighting game for the GBA called Zatch Bell, and it just got an English translation patch. Next, this one has been talked about a lot, but it appears that a very specific version of Mickey Mouse, the one from Steamboat Willie from 1928, is now in the public domain. Apparently, the Disney copyright expired. As a result here, you'll probably see this version of Mickey Mouse in a whole bunch of different areas, including video games. Infestation 88 is one of those games. This is a new co-op horror game where you're hunted by the original Mickey Mouse. It is on Steam. It's not released just yet. It's expected sometime in 2024. Next, Insignia, the replacement for Xbox Live on the original Xbox, has just showcased some development progress. They say we are now able to show the correct message of the day on the Xbox Live main menu. We're still some ways off supporting Halo 2, but we are working hard behind the scenes. If you take a look at the picture here in the bottom right hand corner, it says, Happy New Year 2024, Love Insignia. Next, if you've got an itch to play Final Fight on the Sega Mega Drive, well, there may be a project here you might be interested in. The developer is currently working through a memory leak, but expects the public beta to be available within possibly the next 10 days. I'll drop a link to the tweet in this YouTube video in the description below. And last up, we're talking about the Samsung Galaxy S24. If I'm not mistaken, this phone is set to release in a couple of weeks. However, it appears that Walmart may have blown the doors open just a little bit and released it early, or at least listed it early. Some people were able to capture some details, and I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below. My advice here is just to be patient. If you're in the market for a Galaxy S23, it may be worth waiting until the S24 is released for a discount. I'm not certain as to what Samsung has up their sleeve in terms of pricing, but I'd assume that the S23 would go on sale to clear stock. I might be wrong though. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.